Welcome to Peace Memorial Park in Hiroshima, Japan. I'm Vicki Paddock for the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. I'm here to cover the 11th Annual Summit of Nobel Peace Laureates. Of the six Nobelists attending the summit, three were recipients of the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation's Distinguished Peace Leadership Award. Jody Williams, His Holiness the 14th Dalai Lama, and co-founder of Peace People in Northern Ireland, Mairead Corrigan McGuire. Gentle and compassionate with laser-sharp insights born of 35 years on the front lines of peace, Mrs. McGuire was a forceful presence. I passionately believe that, of course, we will abolish nuclear weapons, and I passionately believe that, of course, we will abolish war. Um, I come from a situation in Northern Ireland where we suffered violent ethnic political conflict for many years. Um, we had a system of injustice uh, and tragically, instead of staying with the course of non-violently dealing with the injustice in our society, the genie of violence was let out of the bottle. And once you let violence out into a community, it's very hard to stop it. So we found ourselves in 1976 in a vicious circle of violence, killing, bombing, shooting, absolute devastation, and nobody knew how to stop it. Um, whenever in August 76, my youngest sister took her three little children for a walk, there was a violent clash between the British Army and the Irish Republican Army, and all the three little children were killed. And she herself was dangerously ill and not expected to live. She survived for a little while, but she then, her heart was broken and she couldn't go on. So she took her own life because the pain was so deep. When Anne lost her three children, uh, it touched the hearts of many people because too many people had died in Northern Ireland and for too long. And thousands and thousands of people come onto the street to say, enough is enough, no more killing. We don't need to kill each other. I was very inspired as a young woman by the life of Dr. Nagaya. And the Japanese audience will know who Dr. Nagaya is. But for those who haven't heard of him, I would recommend that you read his life. Uh, Dr. Nagaya was, uh, lived in Nagasaki. Uh, he studied uh, as a medical doctor radiation. And he was in the hospital studying when Nagasaki was bombed. Uh, he stayed there to look after the, the, the victims. And when he went back to his home, he found his wife was dead and his children had been killed in the Nagasaki bombing. And Dr. Nagaya uh, then started talking about forgiveness. In the immediate aftermath of losing his family, he spoke of reconciliation and forgiveness. To me, Dr. Nagaya is Japan's Gandhi, totally forgiving. Because you see, life is all about suffering. We all suffer. But if we get stuck in our suffering, we can feed our bitterness and our anger, and we can destroy our creativity and our imagination. But if we travel through our suffering, we can become more loving, more compassionate. To me, suffering can deepen your compassion. It can deepen your sense of empathy with those who suffer. That's the only good thing that comes out of suffering, is that it deepens your compassion. There's two things we all do to each other, and our governments do it particularly well. We demonize, demonize each other, and we scapegoat others for our problems. So I think we have got to recognize in an interdependent, interconnected world that we have today, we shouldn't have any enemies. We should be going out and making friends with everyone and talk to those who are using violence because it's only then we get to solve the problem. In 1998, I went with the Nobel Peace Delegation to Iraq. And we were told very clearly in Baghdad that Iraq unscumbed on its job so well, Iraq is no threat to anyone outside its borders. 
But tragically, part of the belief were determined to take us on a shock and awe war. And I think that's why people around the world, particularly the civil, civil community, has to be very, very active in saying no to war, no to weapons. There are always alternatives to peace, sit down and talk. When people challenge government's policies, they're not, they're not challenging the people. You know, we're just the policies that we need to work on. So we should keep the friendships there. We should cooperate. I think solidarity, the word solidarity, is so important to us. If we really could unite all the different uh, civil communities, um, action groups, women's groups, environment groups, human rights groups, and, and if we can unite and work together uh, on the issue of nuclear disarmament and solving our problems based on international laws and uh, not using force in order to solve our problems, you know, we have a massive, massive superpower. And I think we've not shown to a great extent in the, uh, the, during the, the world on the march when we said no to the war in Iraq. Millions and millions of people come out. And there are millions and millions of people out there who don't want nuclear weapons. When did you ever meet someone who said, I want nuclear weapons? Yes. I mean, they, they don't say it with a clear conscience. They know in their hearts we can't use these things anyway. So I really think that we're knocking on an open door. But the problem is we're not united as people working and allowing each other room to work. So solidarity is such an important word. And I think we must never underestimate the ability of our political leaders to see the people want this. You know, today, nuclear weapons, the people are leading. The, new, the, the politicians will soon wake up and say, there go my people, and I am their leader. Now, we have got to create that massive shift of consciousness to say no to nuclear weapons. And I believe it's there. It's just there. We need somewhere or something, a few men and women with vision to say, let's go for it. So let's not underestimate here in Hiroshima, the 2020 vision of women without nuclear weapons is possible. So that's doable. So let's get together and let's do it.